Welcome to season 2023 of The Profile. I'm Gary Dunn, and in the hot seat tonight, or the comfy chair, is uh, Mr. Tom Jennings, the one and only. How are you, Tom? Good day, see you. Yeah, I'm well, Yeah, mate. very well. Have you dined in the canteen? And oh, I have. You... I'm partaking of some um, some clear liquid and some mm. not so clear liquid. Yeah, you got yeah. a cup of tea and some water there? I have, I have. And I've charged up on some scotch and some red wine. The interviewer drinks more. Yeah, yeah, right. We'll, just, we'll, we'll be opposite. <laughs> but you're not interviewing Peter Sellers, so you'll be like... No, pretty num num. Yeah, hey, um, num Tom, but where were you born? T t In Perth. Yeah. St John of God, um, yeah. yeah, 1959, so that yeah. puts me at 64 now. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. a lot older than me, obviously. Oh, well, you know, some people just hold their age, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> what instruments do you play, Tom? Um, guitars. Yep. Guitars, but can can muck around on, um, I mean, I've got my, my own uh, drum kit that I use for recordings, um, so I could I could play drums and I could play piano, but I don't exactly know exactly what I'm doing. It's mm -hmm. only for writing purposes. Yeah. And then once I've put anything down, then 10 minutes later I've forgotten about it. Yeah. But that, but, you know, um, for for a job uh, professionally, it's guitars, yeah. whether it be bass guitar or just yeah. six string guitar. Nothing flash, no yeah. Jimmy Page here. Yeah, you know. I wish. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I just leave that up to someone else. Yes. <laughs> so the light bulb moment, if you like, what was the turning point in your life where you decided? Probably you're... primary school. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, my parents were the ones that bought all the first albums. My parents bought all the Beatles, the with the Beatles, Hard Day's Night. Um, but I also got two copies of Tom Jones' um, Green Green Grass of Home album, which yep. is one of my favourite albums, track for track. Uh, for some reason, it's just out, outstanding. And we were big Seekers fans. Yeah, yeah. That's where I sort of learnt um, the value in harmony. Yeah. In harmonies, being able to sing, yep. you know, together, not just everyone singing the same yep. thing all the time. That was that was good lessons, and of course. Beatles were Beatles. Yeah. Monkeys were in there as well as well, you know. That all just sort of joined the, yeah. the troupe. So what what was the first band? How did that, that all start? That would have probably been um, the one that probably worked would have been the third year high school band that we were in during school in Mount Lawley Senior High School. So we wouldn't get to go to the socials and hang around the, the girls or anything because we were playing. So we got we got to look at them all from the stage, but that that's about mm. it. But we were having the best time well, because I, in those days you you you. I, I went to school with guys like Ronnie Vervest and yeah. and Tony Gibbs. They yeah. were my best friends. We were a tight little unit. We started writing songs together, and and Ben Glatzer was oh, the yeah. drummer. Uh, we called the band Equinox. I still got the poster that I drew and coloured in, still got it, <laughs> at, for the third year high school. But we had yeah. a ball because you're doing Jethro Tull and yeah. Purple and anything that, that you can handle, yeah. that, you can, that you can either sing in your range or the guys could play. Yeah. Yeah. Guys like Rodney, even then, yeah. could, uh, could handle anything that Tony I only had to deal up. You find you, the next day you went back to school, you had the queue of girls lining up to... Yeah, no, yeah. Huh? no. Okay. Don't know what it was. Mainly Rodney, maybe, yeah. maybe Ben. I don't know. I was always like the one, the one girl guy. You know, I was just, <laughs> just the one girl all the time. Go away, go away, that one. Yeah. And then she'd say, "Go away." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was the next thing? How how did you progress from the school um, thing into l playing yeah, around from, and from pumps? school? Just uh, once once I left school, uh, got a job selling clothes. Um, and then just started in a band called uh, uh, Tomcats, and we played at the, the Swan, the Swan Inn, the one just outside of Fremantle, yep. next to the old bridge, in the basement. Is that the one? The basement that's still under there. Yeah. Um, with once again, uh, a good musos, um, and we we just we just started playing, just started gigging like that. Yeah. And then it just went from there. And uh, 1988, are we up to anywhere near there? Um, uh, no, no, because what, so uh, what happened before that? Or the that during that the stage of being in in cabaret type of bands, you know, that played at the River Vale and rah, rah, yeah. rah, 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 all that sort of sort of circuit, 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 and then someone from Warner Brothers spots me, 
and says, you know, uh, I'm formulating this band over the Eastern States with the guitarist from Mother Goose and uh, we're doing auditions for singers. So um, do you want to audition? Well, yeah. I mean, I knew who Mother Goose was with the number one baked beans. Yeah. And they were, they were touring, yep. you know, doing what they do. But they'd, they'd, he'd left the band. Peter had left the band and he's getting something organised there. So I auditioned for them. Uh, we, we got into that. He, he also told me of this new show that they were starting on TV called Neighbours and they were doing photo shoots for possible uh, new, new actors for Neighbours. So I did a photo shoot of that. Um, and then we ended up releasing a single, I Can Hardly Wait, for Landing Party. That was the name of the oh, band, Landing Party. Yeah, I remember Landing that Party. That went for, you know, two, three who, years. Who was in that band again? Well, that was uh, Peter Dixon. Yep. Uh, 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 yeah, you got me. No. Oh. Uh, Chris Davies yep. uh, was bass player. Alex, uh, he had a Russian something, sort of second name, I yep. can't remember it. He was a keyboard player. Yep. Um, uh, and a Melbourne, a, a guy from Melbourne, drummer from Melbourne came over. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, we were just. What year was the landing like that. party again? That, was that, that would have probably been 84. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, 80, 80, 82 to 84, something like that. Went down to Rhinoceros Studios in, in Rockingham and recorded the single. Yeah. So I'm at least on a single. <laughs> They make great coasters these days. <laughs> I've got a, a, a couple of boxes of them at home. Yeah. But I've, I've still got them. <laughs> so between 84, we're yeah. talking about there with the landing party, then up to 88, was there anything happening? Yeah, through, in that, time? That, that was through um, uh, uh, Red Square. Yeah, Red Square. Red Square. It was Red Square was an offshoot from what was left of landing party, as most bands in those days, you know, when that one, one, when bands would break up, the, the scatterings would often. form, yeah, <laughs> would, would form with other bands that have broken That's up right. and then the satellites <laughs> would just continue keep, keep, spinning yes. in space. So who, yeah. who joined Red Square then? So yeah. that was, um, well, Frames had splintered, so yeah. we got Max, we got Clint, yeah. uh, we got uh, Dave Cook. Yeah. So Red Square was basically Frames, Motors yeah. and me. Yeah, yeah. So you got John Webster and Dave Cook yep. from Full, uh, uh, Motors. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you got um, Max. And yeah, Max from, uh, from Frames. Frames. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Cool. Yeah, they, it was a good band. I remember seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the one that went all the way through to about 1990. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in 1988, you won the Yamaha Song Competition. Yeah, 89. Uh, sorry, 89. Yeah. My producers put 88. So. So nice wow. of you. Thanks. So. We'll What's just mark, do a bad <laughs> note for that, can you? you know, like, give him a black mark. <laughs> okay, so let me rephrase that question, Tom. In 1989, yeah. you won the Yamaha Song Competition. Yeah, the band did. With the, um, uh, we, well, each band had to put in two songs. Yep. Uh, had to get sheet music and all written up. So 250 bucks later, uh, you submit you submit your songs and... Lo and behold, we win. Bang, we get to go over to the, the Star Club in, in Melbourne to be in the semi-finals, which yeah. is three bands from Tasmania, a uh, band from Tasmania, a band from there, a band from there, a band, band, band from West Australia. We go over there, bang, we win it. We come back and then we go over there for uh, the, the next finals, which is like three bands or something, and bang, we win that. And so the prize from winning that was you get a chance to go to Tokyo and you also, you're in an episode of Hey Hey It's Saturday. Wow. So we were, you know, the band that's on at the end of the show on Hey Hey It's Saturday, uh, that's that's probably on some of the footage. Yeah. Most definitely. That we're going to see later. Most, the, yeah, that'll, that'll yeah. definitely be on, on, the, on the footage there. The, yeah. The complete episode of, of that, probably the entire episode just to be safe. But yeah. we're right at the end if you yeah. need to fast forward. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. Get past Ding Dong's thing with a brown paper bag, <laughs> on. and we're standing there going, "Come on!" Come on. So was was that band Clutch Cargo? Yeah, that was yeah. Clutch. So that who was in that band? That was so at the time that was me, Dave Cook, Max, and Clint. All right. Well, just John Webster not in that band. No. no, by that time the it we'd morphed again. 
Yeah. And and see, Clint wasn't a, the original. The original clutch was me, Dave, John, uh, and Max. Yeah. Uh, there there was no Clint. Uh, when when John left, his position was filled by Clint. Yeah. Who joined then? So and then we became just basically, uh, you know, a guitar band. Yeah. It was always really good having Webster there because yeah, he's yeah. such a great piano player. Absolutely. Um, you know, the sky's the limit. Any anything yeah. you wanted to try, John could do it. Yeah. Piano wise, it was it was good fun, but it was it was also good with the other. Dudes. If you had been watching episodes before, I'm not sure what episode John's is, but he's definitely got one of these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the other one, I think it was. Um, so let's fast track a bit. Mm. Um, so in between then and now, I, and I, I, I played with you last year in Caratha when you were yeah. playing with Peter DeVita. Yeah. You're doing cruises. You, you, yeah. So you, just basically doing stage shows, really. Yes. And, uh, and who are characters. you in those stage shows? Those uh, it can either be it can either be McCartney. Or it can either be uh, Bowie. It can either be. Uh, Jake from the Blues Brothers, yep. or it can be uh, Cliff, depending on on the night, or Mick. Yeah. So these days, you know, they might, people might hire us as Beatles and Stones. So, yeah. so you do Mick Jagger. I, got, I got to scream my head off in the Beatles <laughs> thing, and then jump around like a monkey at the end of the night too. So you Paul McCartney, and then you yeah, and and do the Mick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Mick Jagger. Make wow. life hard for myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I saw you that night. I saw you did Abba. Then you did something else. You were playing yeah. keyboards, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just, just, it's just a prop. Oh, okay. So they're, they're, they're on a backing track, if you like. Plays. Hey? They're on a backing track, if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. I do, I've yeah. done a... No, it's just a, just a, a, a prop thing there. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and, the, and then we did Bowie. Well, Bowie might yeah. have been on first because Apple... No, Bowie think. was really brilliant, actually. Bowie come yeah. on. Well, that's yeah. just, you know, that's the thing. With those, with those sort of characters, even though I've got a... I dress up and get up and, and, and play like that uh, and, and do things like that. At least I get to play the characters mm. that I like. I've got you to know, tell you, I produce. I like doing McCartney. I like doing Bowie stuff. is just outstanding. Yeah. Bowie stuff is lovely to sing. I've got to tell you, our producer just loves that sort of stuff. He, <laughs> he does. Don't you, Al? I like I mean, he's an advocate for... I do it for Murray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I've heard mm, him. Yeah. <laughs> there um, all the time. So, looking back at all of the music you grew up with, yeah. or that we grew up with, so what? What do you think the future holds for music, and what 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 do you think of the music today, and and what do you think going forward? Is a do you have yeah, an opinion well, you on know, that? Personally, we all can't sort of help getting not stuck in the in the in the music that we like, but music changes you look at music from the 70s to now if music just was always just to be the same like it was always going to be a certain style of music they just write another song but it's got to change it's got to evolve all the time and and technology takes over so it takes it away from you know the physicality of 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 you know watching someone mm. play and perform even though there's still a lot of you know Bands out there, people out there that still get up there and play their instruments, but what's being directed at the younger generation, they most of them realise that why do I need to play guitar for? Mm. Why do I need to learn any instrument for? Mm. I can just go, boop, and then I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. Half well, the DJs reckon they're doing gigs. What you doing a gig? Really? Yeah. Where's your instrument? Here it is. Wee, 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 wee. Okay, yeah. that's not. <laughs> well, yeah, I yeah. Playing a guitar for me is like an extension of me. It's yeah. like it, it's something that's part of me. It's yeah. in I your mean, heart. It's in your head. It just could be yeah. us too. Like we just yeah. like to like to see someone grinding an axe and and doing and getting down yeah, and yeah. rocking on stage. Yeah. But yeah. to me, there's just nothing like it. Yeah, yeah, nothing like it. So, who's your earliest influence? You think uh, from Beatles. a band of Beatles? Yeah, yeah. And um, your favourite band of all time, Beatles. Beatles. Gets monotonous from now on, so... <laughs> who's your favourite guitar player? George Harrison. Um, who's your favourite drummer? Ah, drummers. Well, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, you know, it's, don't listen to everyone who says, oh, Ringo, you know, you, you, anyone could have played with the Beatles. I mean, really? Yeah. Really? No. No. He wanted to leave in 1968. The yeah. guys basically yeah. dragged him back yeah. in there. No, yeah. no, I don't think so. No. Um, oh, look, all sorts. I mean, once again, you can go from anywhere, uh, like extravagant... I was a big Emerson Lake and Palmer fan. Yeah, um, and that 
that sort of drumming blew me away. Like I said to you, I'm a, in the middle of, you know, my Led Zeppelin phase again. It yes. just comes around once every five years or something like that. Listening to physical graffiti at the physical moment. Physical yeah. graffiti at the moment. Brilliant album. <laughs> uh, and, and it, yeah, John Bonham. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it depends on what the flavour of the month is. Yeah. You know, but they're definitely up there. Yeah. And, and Ringo as well, of course. So you, when you were playing throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, you yeah. obviously saw a lot of Perth bands. Uh, well, once again, you know, you see as many as you can yeah. because you're working the same time they are. Of course. So the only time you actually got to see any sort of bands is, is when you are at the Nook and Busters yeah. or it was Monday night and they used to have the, the things yeah. down there. Where a few band, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, a few bands would, would be on on your night off, Monday, yeah, yeah. Tuesday, yeah, yeah. Wednesday, whatever it was. We'd always, and just go and see as many as we can, Hooker. Yeah, what was your favourite um, band that you saw live? Uh, well, when band? we first started off, Visitor, things yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. we, because we were just amazed at, wow. The City listen, Hotel. Listen to that. <laughs> and the Raffles. Yeah. And the Raffles, yeah. yeah, all that sort of thing. Uh, uh, Fatty Lumpkin at the time. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. Uh, the local bands yeah. uh, as as well. We just, just to start getting a, a layout of, a yeah. feel for what was to be expected. Yeah. <laughs> so you, um, other jobs throughout your life? All sorts, but yeah. you know, sell, I sold clothes for five years. Yeah. Parker and Company means where? Yeah, um, I say. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, yeah, my friends hated me. They called me <laughs> Mr. Thomas in the shop. And she said, now, if you're going to have your friends from school or from your mates coming in there, I don't want to hear him call you Tommy or Tom. You were called Mr. Thomas or Mr. the Thomas. <laughs> of the shop. So it was like, are you being served? That's, yes. I got that for years. Yeah. I got Mr. Dunnybrush. Yeah, really? <laughs> Mate. Phil. But that, you know, Calm down. playing in bands as well Yeah. as we all were. We were all sort mm. of working jobs, but also playing in bands as well. And everyone got paid cash in those days. Just come and... Stick it in the drawer, yep. close the drawer, and there's money just sticking out left, right, and centre. Yeah. You know, do it. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> it didn't last long, <laughs> I, think, I can tell in, you. I think in Hooker we were like 10 or 12 grand a week or something, and my dad said to me, how much are you getting? I go, 200? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was happy. Yeah. Because there was eight different girls a week or whatever. So It's know. a lifestyle. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Tom. Yeah. Okay. If you were stranded on a deserted island, the White Hell. <laughs> I'm not even finished. Like you've never seen any other episodes. Well, it was either that or what woman would you take? But <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me that? No, it'd have to be two copies of the White Hell. Then. <laughs> what was your favourite TV show growing up? Uh, there's look, there's just a combination. It depends, but yeah. anything from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, I Dream of Genie, F Troop, yeah. Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Adam's Family, The Munsters, uh, all those things sort of growing. Come home from school, get a freezer, yeah. um, sit there and watch it all. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, the chock top, <laughs> sit on your buffet <laughs> and watch an episode of The Monkeys and uh, hit it with a couple of sticks. Yeah, okay, you fa you're a singer, essentially, mm -hmm. so what's your favourite singer of all time? Probably McCartney again. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, pretty, in the category of pop, if yeah. it was a category of heavy heavy music, which say McCartney would not be able to do, mm. but in pop, yeah. yes. But yeah. in heavy rock, you'd have to say things yeah. either like Robert Plant or something like that. That's what I would say. If, mm. uh, but if it was country, if someone was saying, well, what's your best country sort of singer? Because, yeah. you know, not, just because you're a singer doesn't mean you can yeah. just What is your best anything. country singer? Do you have one? Best country? Oh, I've always been a Jimmy Buffett fan. Yeah, yeah. But once again, that's older, older style, yeah. but, you know, I like it. Mm. So liked it. for the last week or so, I've been watching Australian Idol mm. and look, I cringe watching it, to be honest with you, but it's funny and uh, there are some good things on there. What, what's your take on reality singing shows? After doing the competition yeah. of things, um, even though when we were in Tokyo there, uh, the idea of winning was like, really? But when, even, when you didn't, when you didn't, the crushing feeling that you had anyway, knowing that you were coming back yeah. to Australia and you didn't, it didn't happen. We were just about there. Yeah. Not, but it's only, it's a, a competition again. It's not, doesn't yeah. mean you're, that's it, you're set for life or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But it can be, 
soul destroying. And when someone says, you know, you're going to be a star, but they're only just auditioning or it's her first appearance on Idol or something like that. And they get told by someone, one of the experienced judges that you're going to be a star, man, bang. No, the experienced judge. That's got to make an impression on them. And, you, yeah, and, yeah. If, and if things go wrong, uh, it kill them. Harry Connick Jr., of watching him the last week, he doesn't say that. There's people like Kyle who go, yeah, you're the star. You're yeah. the, you deserve to be on this show. You're going to be a, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I don't think he knows who he's talking about. Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> kill me. You'll kill me one day. So today you're doing cruises. Uh, at so, this stage of the game, yeah, we still work around town, around Australia. Yeah. Um, but the cruises have only just sort of started to arc up again Obviously, from last from November. COVID. Yeah, yeah. So we've been at them. We've been on five of them uh, since. Have you found that experience pre-COVID and, and post-COVID? Is there any difference in the cruise? A lot busier before that. Um, when, once COVID's thing, that was it. Everything stopped. Yeah. I mean, we all know. Yeah. Everything stopped, just everything. Yeah. And it, the, the hardest part wasn't that it all just stopped, is that how long it stopped for, which meant how long everything was going to take to gear up again once yeah. it all started again. Yeah. So two years. Mm. Someone had told me six months into COVID that, oh, by the way, now it's going to be two years. Yeah. I probably would have thought I'd better do something else. Is it a better experience now on the cruises than it was before? It's COVID? not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought yeah. you'd have to be lining up with masks on yeah. and people serving you, next, please. Don't yeah. stand over there, stand over yeah. here. Don't dance over there, yeah. dance over here. Yeah. But you can't do that on a cruise ship because your yeah. idea is have fun. So if people yeah. can't have fun, they're not gonna. Yeah. So not a lot. All the, the crew members, they have to wear masks still all the time, every yeah. day, all the time. So at 64 and starting when you were say 14, mm. 50 years of being in this industry, yeah. um, what's, the most, what's the most important thing you've got out of it for yourself? Is, it, is there something that that sticks out for you or? Uh, well, I'm still, I'm, I still love it. Yeah. I'm still interested in it. Yeah. It still takes up my mind yeah. as far as things, general things are concerned. Yeah. So it just must be in me and that's it. Yeah. And that's your form of income only at the moment? At this stage well? of the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Do you have yeah. any unfulfilled ambitions, Tom? I uh, haven't been, haven't gone to England yet. Okay. Really? Love to see England. I mean, yeah. I'd like to see the uh, the states and everything as well. Go to St James Park in Newcastle but, oh, and watch Newcastle no. play. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Sixty thousand people, you'd love it. Mate. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was going. <laughs> I was, I was just about ready to be booked. We were all going to take mm -hmm. August off in twenty twenty because out the whole year was booked except for that month. So we thought this is great. But the first time we've got a whole year booked. Mm. We don't have to worry about when the next booking is for a year, and we got August off. Great. So you, that's when I was going to go to England. To the cavern. I'll be oh, one mate. of the places you would have gone. I'd be, I'd be to the yeah. Imperial War Museum, yeah. go and see the gold yeah. mine. Hey, hey. <laughs> and then down to Abbey Road. And oh, yeah, mate, yeah. all over the shop, yeah. all over the shop. Do you collect anything, Tom? Um, not in a, in a while, but I've got about um, maybe four, five hundred Marvel comics. Wow. That I started collecting... Um, in the 60s. Are they worth something? Uh, people tell me that they would be. They're mm. all all Marvel. They're not, you mm. know, bits and pieces. They're all Marvel. Well, Marvel's pretty huge now. Yeah, oh. especially the research. Once the technology caught up and now yes. the movies and everything are yeah, just yeah. over the top and it's yeah. it's business again. People, mm. But it's the daunting fact of going through them all yeah. and finding someone who, who you know, l price them because oh, they, okay. they're all... I mean, they're, they're, they're all in fairly good condition, but, you know, when you're judging comic books, like a book, they get judged on different things. Yeah. Perfect, mint condition, or poor. On That's what, a, the paper quality is? On, like, on, the... ev on everything. It okay. You know, you'd be surprised the amount of things they'll look at and go, right, no, that's, that's, yeah. that's not really worth it. But, of course, there are other ones there that are bought brand new because um, there was mm. a stage when I bought them brand new, read them, especially Spider-Man's, Iron Man's, yeah. things like that, and then closed them up put a backing board, a bag, and boom. And they were brand new, but they're from 1971. Wow. So they'll be, we'll see. One of these days I'll pull out all the boxes <laughs> and, uh, you know, oh, great. that the grandkids don't sort of <laughs> ransack. Do you have grandkids? Yeah, I've got two grandkids. And how old are they? Oh, five and five mm. and four. Yeah. yeah, one of my grandkids is Spider-Man. Like, he's Spider-Man. Yep. That's it. He's got yep. everything. 
crawls around the house. <laughs> yeah. No, my mother caught me on the roof, you know, <laughs> yeah. wearing my bright red Ready jumper because it was the closest Ready thing I could do. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing up there? Nothing, mum. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting the wind up. All right. Well, what would you put on your gravestone? Dig here. Dig here. <laughs> <laughs> First time I've heard that. Oh, no, so I read it and thought, no, what what can you say? You know, it has a slight musical reference to it, I guess. Mm. I don't know, but you can't pick Spike Milligan's one after nah. after I told you know I told you I was sick. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what can you what can you say after that? Yeah. Is there something that you we don't know about Tom Janice that you want to share with us, or is there Not is the there someone you've sense, forgotten no. to mention, or, huh? or is there some one you've forgotten to mention or you want to talk about or oh no just the just the guys that i work with now with you know pete devitt and, yeah. and dave swan and yeah. everything in the in the band in the organization that we're in now because i mean as you all know just even just trying to organize you know even what we do now it takes so yeah. much stuff yeah so much stuff and um they've, they've been doing a big job of that for quite some time yeah yeah. Um, you know, with, with flights and organising this and organising that. I mean, geez, I'd never be able to do it. Yeah. There would always have to be someone else there that, that does that. I don't mind getting up, st getting on stage and doing the meat and potatoes, mm. but there's always got to be someone to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's about it, really. You know, that's just what we're sort of about. I mean, there's been a few medical issues and things like that that I've had to juggle around. Uh, with kidneys and things like that over the last 12 months. So that sort of impeded, you yeah. know, certain things. Um, but at the at this stage of the game. Are you okay? Like, yeah, about, at this at yeah. this stage of the game, yeah. it's just like, we'll keep going. Yeah, yeah, cool. Hmm. Tom, so wonderful to have you here. Yeah, yeah. no so problem. So happy to hear your journey and your story. So <laughs> thanks for coming in, mate. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thanks, you. Yeah, thanks, thank sir. you very much. That's... Uh, I don't know what episode, 127, I think. But is this 100, a 127. Yeah. I have to yeah. make a note of that. <laughs> 127. Yeah. I don't That's know it. what, one, one what clip we're going to play, but um, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. They'll think us. of something. They've got stuff there that they can find no something. Worries. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on The Profile. Thank you. <laughs>